You can no longer buy agricultural produce directly from farmers in Nigeria. That's the message from Nigeria's government to foreigners. And what's the reasoning behind this new policy? Stay with us on The Breakfast to find out. The Nigerian Senate has said no to President Muhammad Buhari, something that's quite rare these days. We look at the implication of their refusal to amend the electoral acts as requested by Mr. President. And we have incisive analysis of the headlines in today's national dailies. This is a breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Very good morning to you. Welcome to the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, what's a beautiful Thursday morning. I'm Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Bopo. It feels really great to be back in your screen this beautiful um, morning. And of all, as always, we're set off with our top trending conversations. Yes, indeed. A lot to talk about. Mercy. Um, <laughs> the first one is, is something that you cannot write. You know when they say you cannot write this script. You can't write. This is what we're talking about. My, um, a... Uh, we have one concern. I think we'll talk about that in a second, but let's go first to Ukraine. Of course, um, the Nigerian government, through the Minister of Foreign Affairs, tweeting, uh, telling Nigerians that um, there's some good news. Uh, criticism coming the way of the federal government uh, regarding how quick or slow rather they've been you know, to evacuate Nigerians from Ukraine, especially Nigerian students who form the majority of the Nigerians in Ukraine. Uh, but some good news. As the Nigerian government on Tuesday began evacuation of um, the students who were stuck in Sumi. Sumi is a troubled city in northeast Ukraine, uh, one of those cities where you have the Russians already in. Um, so before now, there would have been no hope of getting people out, but the Russians formed what you call a humanitarian corridor, simply saying that we're going to allow, you know, people who want to leave, leave. We're fighting, you know, we're bombing, we're shooting, we, you know, but for those who are civilians who want to leave, you're opening the way they can drive out, you know, move out for um, you know, medical convoys who want to come into the city to treat the wounded, you know, or to take people who are wanted to hospital, we're allowing that. So. Uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Yema, he's been busy in recent days and uh, weeks. He's had his work cut out for him, him and he's earning his, his salary, really, in this period. Um, not to say he doesn't work where he works, but anyway, he's working harder. Um, he posted on his official Twitter handle, um, on his official Twitter account, saying, quote, Delighted and mightily relieved that the evacuation of our Nigerian students from Sumi has commenced. They are in our thoughts and prayers as they, as they undertake the very long and hazardous trip to safety. He called it the very long and hazardous trip to safety. So um, I think it's, it's good news. It's good yeah, news not, for, for, for Nigerian students. Absolutely good news Great. because uh, if you look at the description over time of Nigeria and all of this incident, uh, we have been described as very lackadaisical and not one to be proactive and act. Although you still have some persons who are saying, oh, we, we really didn't act very, I mean, we didn't act in, on time, uh, however you want to put it. But it's a good thing that evacuation has started, no matter how slow. I mean, it's better late than never. So uh, it's very commendable of the federal government of Nigeria and uh, we applaud them and we say it's a good one that they've been able to evacuate and mm. oh, I'm sure that we still have some numbers who are still, you know, stranded. But the good thing is the fact that these students were able to speak up and that's it. Um, it's, it's also good to say that technology is not necessarily an internet, social media is not necessarily bad at the end of the day because if that outcry was not put out and then we started having the buzz on social media and all of that, maybe just maybe those students would have been evacuated but we're proud of the Nigerian government uh, it doesn't matter how late they started but it's a good thing that we have over a thousand uh, from Sumi and it's uh, really commendable yes indeed yes looking at some comments on um, uh, on on that administrative street of course um, people having good uh, words for the federal government um, people having good things to say uh, pouring praise some are saying this is awesome news, some are saying great news, you know, praying for safety and healing. Um, um, some deciding to do the political, go the political route, blaming, uh, praising the APC-led federal government. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
But anyway, I mean, if you knock government for not doing well, when they do, do well. well, you should praise them. Uh, I personally felt that the reaction, you know, to the students not being evacuated was um, was a bit uh, over the top, because not just Nigeria, a lot of other uh, countries, even Ukraine themselves, never expected that the Russians would do this. No, no, and, 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 and usually evacuation is is a is a reaction. They could have done better, but you know, it was over the over the top for me. It was over the top. So, um, so if you actually follow, I mean, I mentioned the fact that over time we have been described as very lackadaisical. We know, um, even if you come back to Nigeria, our country, we understand the body language and how the federal government and the government respond to the issues that concern the lives uh, of citizens and, uh, you know, everyone around. We haven't been very proactive. We haven't acted. Mm -hmm. And so based on that antecedent, mm -hmm. it would have been that, you know, Nigeria wasn't really going to do anything. Right. And so, but I like the fact that, however, we expected that there probably would have been an action. We had the back and forth whether the government should be responsible for evacuating the citizens. Because at the end of the day, you want to say that uh, the government was not necessarily involved in the, um, you know, the government was not necessarily involved in sending this kids, you know, these children yeah. to go school in Ukraine, but you have uh, the parents being uh, very responsible for this particular action, and so the parents should be responsible for evacuating them. We had all of this argument, but like I might rightly mention, it is very commendable. Uh, we, have, we have proven, and we don't have to, but we have, I mean, we, we you know, when you constantly want to, um, you get to a point where you have to prove a point. Uh, then we have to prove a point, but we don't need to get to a point where we have to prove a point. But the point is, we have actually proven a point that no matter lots, how lots bad... Lots of points in there. Lots of the point in is, there. We, we, have, we have gotten it. It doesn't matter how late it is. Uh, we commend the federal government. Mm -hmm. We commend everyone that's been involved. And we also commend the student for speaking out and understanding that you can't keep quiet because when you keep quiet, evil will continue to thrive. It doesn't matter. So it, it shows us that, you know, the Nigerian government cares about, you know, the lives of Nigerians. We've seen what happens in Nigeria. And we constantly I, I, I say, oh, the Nigerian government doesn't really care. About so, yes, <laughs> this is me applauding right. the government. All right. uh, that's All right. very commendable. Right. Interesting. Yeah. I think also the students themselves also have a responsibility. We can tell you that we have heard that there are some students who are still in Ukraine. They don't want to leave. You understand? They don't yeah, want to and, leave. and that's a personal decision. You know, because, because I know that there was a statement, no matter how badly worded, put out by the Nigerian Ministry of, of, of Foreign Affairs, I think, um, saying that leave. They said leave. If you, if you don't feel safe, leave. You know, take responsibility for your safety. And truly, you have to be responsible for yourself. That's you have the first responsibility or first person to take responsibility for your safety is you. You don't wake up in the morning and say, oh, federal government has to take care of me. No. You know, so people should have been a bit proactive themselves as well um, to, to know what is going on, to know how things grow, not just in Nigeria, but around the world. Governments are usually not fast because of uh, processes, red tape and all that. And they should have been, you know, at least started moving up before, before now. But I'm happy to hear that uh, this has been done. Uh, well, we the, hope the, for the best. The, the people that would we say, say no to war. Yeah, say, say no say to yes war. To but you know, Kofi, I'm sure Kofi you never want to be in that situation where the government will say, you know, take take care of yourself. You, ha you, ha you, you have to you, be you have to Yeah, be we understand you have to be responsible. You wake up, you wake up in the morning but it's not in the a war situation. for you. Kofi, it's, uh, the, the, the examples are not the same. I have never experienced war. And I don't want to experience it as much as it feels like maybe war would be the way to peace. Uh, as people would argue, you know, you can't have peace without having war. But I'm saying that in that particular, you can't just compare it. it it's so difficult. First, you're not in your country, you're not in comfort zone, and you understand, you know, how it feels like being a black skin. You can't take that away being in another man's it's, it's, it's such a difficult thing to say. Maybe the federal government would have probably said another word. I mean, it's okay to say yes, of course, as a human being, there's always a natural instinct of survival. All so you will push yourself to survive. do it. They tell you, they tell you that um, uh, they, they release, for instance, you have the Americans who would normally release a travel advisory to say, okay, they feel that Nigeria or maybe some other country may not be safe for now, um, maybe because of an increased um, 
terrorist activity or maybe some intelligence they've gotten. And they were advised that their nationals should not visit. Sometimes they even give these advices for parts of the country. For instance, they've given for Niger Delta before. Maybe if they feel there's increased militancy or increased kidnapping, they'll tell your citizens, don't go to Nigeria South. But if you go there, if you must go, they know that you are on your own. You know, so what the government put out was there, there's some, some talk of war. Um, what they hear is that there uh, might be attacks in Ukraine from different parts, some other countries, the Russians might enter. So please be careful. If you can leave, leave. But take care of your, be responsible for your safety. Um, and and you, you don't wake up, you know, thinking that government will, you know how it is. So you calculate. You know, I, in life, you shouldn't place your hope on someone who can't help you or who has always shown that they will be slow to help. I, I understand. Yeah. So, but so you see, it's not a common day. say the Russians are flying in. I know I've seen the government uh, message. Ha, it's funny. They didn't even write it in good English. Um, but I'll wait because government has to come and take care of me. That's not the case. We're I'm, saying I'm, that. I'm, I'm not saying You know, that. it's I'm, not I'm an saying, everyday case. I'm just saying that it is a part of this um, uh, situation. So, so you say uh, that. Sorry, Mercy. Yeah. I'm just saying it's a part of the responsibility here that lies with the people involved. And I'm telling you that we have reports right now there's some people still in Ukraine. And that's and that's actually the And if something decision. happens tomorrow, people are going to blame government. No, they can't. You see, so you say that some people have decided that they will stay back. The point where I'm coming from, you need to understand that just before we move away, uh, just before we move away, so so you need to understand that this situation of waking up and saying, hey, you need to take responsibility. As we're in Nigeria, Nigerians are taking responsibility for everything. They provide power for themselves. They provide that's water. They provide everything. Ukraine. No, but that's what we're saying. Ukraine, it, it's even more dicey for you to say, oh, it's okay for you to wake up. It's a war situation. Situation you don't understand. You that, it's that a foreign country. At the, at the time, you don't live in your space. You don't even understand the where the, the missiles will be coming invaded, from. If the and so it would be too difficult for you to wake up and say, oh, you have to take... I understand that you have to take your responsibility. Uh, Naturally, uh, as human time, beings, we yeah. have the natural instinct to always, you know, want to run for safety. So without even being prompted by government, okay. you would always want to find a way. Okay. And that's, it's just natural. It doesn't have to come from right. the government. Right. I'm but not my point is, government blame. I'm not no, saying I'm not saying that a, government, I'm, I'm not saying, saying that, that the government should, but you need to understand that it's not easy to be in to, a war, to, in to a war zone. You know? I mean, for you to even say that, to even mm. you don't, you don't even understand where you're going to go, whether it's left or right, but the missiles will be coming. From. Sandia Delaja, who is the founder of what is called the biggest church in Ukraine, is a Nigerian. He left with his family. He just got on the plane and left with his family. Kofi, you have, have you experienced a war before? I, have I'm, you been in a war I, situation? I, I, can, I, can, I, can I learn? I'm just saying that uh, people are also, whilst the government has some blame, and I, indeed that's the way it is, because comments are usually slow. I'm saying that also... There's a part of this response that applies on people to think for themselves. So if government doesn't come, you're going to stay there and die. You have to move. You have people who walked. You have people who walked, you know, some distance. As long as you can do it. If it's impossible, fine. You know, I'm saying that there's some part of this. You know, I, I, I can tell you, Messi, that if the federal government had taken a plane to Kiev two weeks before the Russians entered, one week before the Russians entered, five days before the Russians entered and said, all Nigerians want to leave hope on that plane. Do you think people, all of them would have hopped on it? No. So, so, so usually there, so, there's so, sometimes so, where you say that there's no need to state the obvious. And the obvious is that naturally people would always sort themselves out whether or not government have to make the statement. But you know, the point here is that in war situation, I mean, I have an experienced war, so it would be difficult for you to understand whether you're going to be very rational. You understand the hormones that will be released at the time. You understand a lot. So it's, I think it's very easy for us to sit here and begin to say, oh, you have to take responsibility for yourself until you are in that situation. But I think that it's time for us to All right. So, so it. It, it, next time when the government does not respond to you, you sit down and say, It's well, natural. They, made, they, they have made an me. effort. So, so in the report, just stay here. If, if you hear in the reports that we gave, they, they said they constantly moved to bomb shelters. They were making effort we, we to survive. We have to move. And that's we have it. To move. Um, uh, well, the next one, of course, is quite bizarre. That's the bizarre what I was talking about. Um, I mean, picture this. Uh, uh, someone who has no business in, in a hospital as a staff, as a nurse, or a health worker, putting on a uniform and going to a health facility, a hospital, and pretending to be a health worker, a nurse. That's the gentleman there. Should, I even, should we even call him a gentleman? Um, a, a viral clip has been shared on the internet, circulated all over social media. Um, it captures the moment a man who was said to be impersonating a nurse in a bid to kidnap a baby at a public health center in Lagos State was caught. Kidnap a baby. 
at the public health center in Lagos State was caught. In the viral clip, he was seen wearing a nurse's uniform while he was being interrogated by health officials who nabbed him. The man was escorted alongside some individuals who threw questions at him in Yoruba. Uh, it's, it's quite unfortunate, mercy. But um, uh, kidnap of a baby, remember what we talked about yesterday, I think it was on Monday or Tuesday, um, and I've been saying to some people out there, during election period, sorry to narrow this down to election period, but somehow, in my experience as a, a media you know, practitioner over the years, you have to talk about what happens in the news. Over the years, it has been my observation that as we inch closer towards elections, you have a, an increased rate of ritual, which ritual abduction and killings of babies and, and individuals, especially women. Um, I don't know if this is related, I can't tell, but you can't help to think about it, you know. Mm. You can't help to think about it. So, I, so I think that today is for, we commend, first of all, commend that the personnel and the officers involved in apprehending and identifying this, and it's really, really applaudable. Uh, just imagine that uh, those who were around the environment were not able to spot that. You probably would have had another child just gone, just like that. But it's just also, you know, a sign and a warning that we need to step up, you know, security across different parasitals, especially where you have the vulnerable, the women and the children. We need to do better. Not necessarily saying that, you know, the men will not need the protection, but I'm saying that if you look at it, uh, they will always go for children and then, of course, women, what have you. So it's very commendable. Like you have mentioned, uh, we probably cannot, but we have seen that this has been a practice over time. The issue of ritual killings being very high and the fact that people have believed because me I constantly ask myself when people keep so how do you kill another person and get money how does that really work and what how does that even add up I can't even understand the whole ideology behind all of that but whether or not I can understand it and whether or not that's true it's important that we need to understand that this practice is on the high and we're inching closer 2023 a lot of people want to go very diabolical some people want to go extra means and so you have targets and the targets will be children and of course they're very vulnerable you want to ask who are the vulnerable in society so it's time for us to up the game not necessarily on government but or please uh, of course so when you talk about government, you want to talk about the police and, uh, you know, all the security personnel. But we as individuals, I mean, in your different space, like I'd say, these crimes are not committed by spirit. We see the people who commit it. They leave with us. They don't come from the sky. They were brothers. They were sisters. They are neighbors, uncles, aunties. It could, it could be anyone. So let's just pay attention. Report the crime. If you see something very suspicious, you need to say something. You need to say something. We can't constantly keep quiet. Because for every time we keep quiet, even we'll continue to try. So um, and that's it for this particular one. But I must yeah. say that it was I, I, very sharp of the yeah, person. I was, I was, I was wondering, you know, um, I mean, how does this work? You know, how does this work? Is it that uh, the, the man just gets, did he saw the nurse's uniform? Did he um, get it from his friend? You know, I mean, how? <laughs> how did he get did you, did it? Did you see and the... He, he, yeah, and he walked into the... Is it that he was just going to stay in the maternity ward and when nobody's looking, just grab the baby? <laughs> you know, some of these people who do this thing, should also, they don't think... Because, I mean, it's not possible to just go into a hospital and just pick a baby, you know. Uh, um, is this something that... I love questions. Is this something that has happened before? Has it been happening? I mean, because if, if, if they have records of, 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 of the, the babies in the hospital. You, you, they're clocked in. You know, they have names, they have tags, they have numbers. So if anything happens, they will know. You know, so I don't know if this is something that's been happening before now. I doubt because it have made the news. You know, so how do you just <laughs> expect to walk into hospital? And, and like you said, um, it's great that the officials, they were vigilant. You know, who are you? What are you doing here? We have to be careful. And that vigilance, everybody in this country, these days we have to be careful. Look around you, you know, um, uh, um, see uh, what's happening, be vigilant. You know, don't take anything for granted. Whether you're in a taxi, in a bus, be vigilant. It's very important. We have to go. We have to go, Mercy. Well, that's so much we can take at this point in time. Thank you so much for being part of uh, the breakfast. Uh, we'll definitely return with more interesting conversation. And of course, at the hour of 8 o'clock will be time for us to look at the front pages of a national daily. Please stay with us.